How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian and today I'm going to be going through your user submitted FPL teams for the upcoming game week which is game week three. Now some of you guys have asked for some advice on where you can make some tweaks and how to improve coming up and I am here to help. Currently I'm sitting in the top 1.5% in the world which is a massive start after the amount of people that have got so many good teams out there. I'm quite proud of that feat so far but there is a long way to go for myself but I am here to help you move along with it. So if you do want to submit your team for next week please check my instagram down below and make sure to submit it through there and make sure to subscribe for the channel for all the upcoming fpl videos as well as all the other football and scotland content right here on the channel now without any further ado let's get off with team one Okay, so Ryan submitted his team here and asked, should he be starting Udogi over Ruben Diaz? Now, I definitely wouldn't recommend that because, yes, uh, Spurs did get a 2-0 win against Man United last week, but Ruben Diaz kind of looks to be like a staple for this year coming up. I know you've always got to worry about Pep Roulette, but with Laporte gone and I don't see John Stones coming back anytime soon, I think he's out till September 16th or something like that, I would be starting Ruben Diaz in that position. Rico Henry, however, I probably would swap them round on your bench because you would rather a doggy come on because even though Crystal Palace is going to be at home to Brentford I do think that Ezzy is something special and they really should have maybe got a penalty against Arsenal and that could come up again so that's what I would suggest to you for this week moving over to team two here all we've been asked for is there any recommendations the only thing i can maybe say is swap trippier new doggy round on your bench and um, just for the fact that trippier is going to come up against liverpool and they're more than likely going to score definitely going to be conceding and you would expect trippier to maybe get an assist in that game if they are going to be a high scoring as they usually are against liverpool obviously last week they were very unlucky to only lose one nil to man city but realistically, it's going to be quite an easy one, I think, for Liverpool because they're going to try and catch some form after that abysmal start they had against Chelsea. Captaining Matoma is a bit brave, but realistically, I brought in a one, you know, last week and captained him when everyone else either had Saka, Haaland, um, Salah or Watkins, who all blanked except Watkins, who got an assist for the penalty. Matoma being captain, yeah, he's been banging them in, so realistically, it's not a bad shout. Um, having Chilwell is, might be a better choice, I think, as your vice captain. Um, he's definitely worth starting because he is going to be playing left wing. But Estepunyan is obviously everyone's go-to goat at the minute because the amount of points he's getting from his position. So fair enough if you want to go him. There's not really a wrong decision in that one. Nicholas Jackson, however, everyone keeps saying that he is going to become good. I personally don't see it. The fact that Chelsea are heavily linked with Balogun from Arsenal for £50 million, is he going to get the game time that a lot of people are expecting? I don't think so. All the AI tools and everyone says, no, he's going to come good, he's going to come good, and I just don't see it for myself. If Chelsea are going to spend £50 million on a striker and him not get the game time over Nicholas Jackson, I can see that happening with the fact that Balogun did do so well in France last year. It's just not in my vision to have Nicholas Jackson right away in my team. And obviously with FPL, you want to be ahead of the curve. Last week um, with a one uni, I thought it was an absolute genius decision to bring him in. And a lot of people called me stupid in that. But turns out getting a captain, getting a goal, you can't be angry with that. But that would be my only decision with this team. If you have transfers, maybe keep Nicholas Jackson out or maybe try and bank the money. I would be recommending Watkins over Nicholas Jackson. Um, but Chelsea do have a far better run of fixtures coming up than Aston Villa. So maybe that's within it. And the fact that Aston Villa is going to be playing European football as well. Fair enough. But my, I just have my concerns about Nicholas Jackson. And I would like to see a bit more of him um, before I start bringing him into my team. Moving over to team three here, we've got Abdul, who's got two free transfers in the bank right now, which is very good, but he does have to make one. I'm very concerned with Man United right now um, because they do not look, they've not got off the mark, obviously. The fact that Varane's their only goal scorer and they got torn apart by Ange Ball last week. My only recommendation is maybe swap out Osula for maybe Archer, as we just mentioned before, for going to Sheffield United um, and keep your two free transfers for next week because you'll have a lot more to navigate with to get Rashford or, Bernandes, or Bruno Fernandes sorry, out of your team to maybe bring in some of the higher priced assets it's going to make a lot more sense to use that next week because if they blank against Nottingham Forest in three game weeks in a row there's going to have to be some serious decisions to make so I would maybe just swap out Osula for Archer and then go from that point on and moving on to team four here 
we have would you go minus four to bring three of these names Foden, March, Matoma, Sterling, Alvarez or Henry instead of Madison, Martinelli, Pedro, Baldock or just use one transfer of Madison to Sterling. Now, realistically, we don't know what the situation is with Madison. It's quite vague at the minute. Um, he did look incredible, obviously, in the first game against Brentford, and then he really tore apart Man United last week. So even though he's got the warning there, maybe wasting a transfer on him might not be as good. But uh, counteractively in saying that, you could get rid of him to bring in the likes of maybe March or Matoma just for the game week and bank the rest of the money for your free transfer that you can use then the week after. I'm still very much in the bank that the fact is that you really, really should be making decisions after the next Man United fixture against Nottingham Forest to lose an asset in that. Baldock, he is just going to be sitting on your bench as bench fodder. Pedro Porro. I think you're better off with your doggy. Pedro Porro, yeah, he had a very good end to the season last year, but he did get tore apart by Scotland a good few months ago when they played with Spain. Um, and I just don't really see the fact that you, fact that you spent four point, or sorry, it would have been five points uh, million at the very start. It's, it's just not really the best investment, I think, in terms of a centre-back, or sorry, a wing-back, any defender in general for that much, apart from maybe... Um, bringing in Saliba I've just noticed there as I'm looking you've still got Gabriel which gives me an absolute headache why people did not pick Saliba Saliba gets way more points per minute than Gabriel um, in terms of like the amount of minutes you've got in the pitch so if you do have a free transfer that you have to use this week I think it's undoubtedly swap Gabriel in for Saliba you might end up losing a little bit of the money you have in the bank but you still have two free transfers and then you could maybe go from that from next week because realistically you could just start um, Saliba, Estepunia and Chilwell as well as everyone else's have Martinelli and Bueno, Rashford and Saka and then actually play your three strikers um, with having Pedro Porro on the bench, that makes a little more sense to me. Um, or even just start Madison um, on your uh, on your actual team and then see, put your first uh, choice sub, uh, which would be very important to see who would come on for you. Realistically, the three people I would be benching in that team are Pedro Porro, Baldock and probably Yao Pedro because he didn't start last week but he more than likely will come on. But you never know, like, the fact that Brighton did bring him on quite confusingly last week as well, whenever they were up as well. So they got, like, the one point, which gave a lot of people a really benching headache, but it did make sense. I still am more on the bit, uh, the side that he is going to be a better asset going on. But you do have a bit more of a trouble here than the other teams so far. I, I would be get If you have one transfer, it's get rid of Gabriel and bring in Saliba. He's definitely worth more points. And then you've got your Martinelli and Saka. Martinelli didn't look that good against Crystal Palace, but he looked unplayable against Nottingham Forest in the first game. So we realistically have to see. He normally won't get the 90 minutes, and we will see the likes of Trossard come on very soon um, in, in place of him. So we want to see where that come one comes out before you start making decisions on wasting transfers. But I would be banking your tr uh, one transfer for this week to see what you're going to do with Rashford. It might still be worthwhile having one Man United asset because the goals have to come from somewhere. But if you have two for next week, you can maybe rotate, bring in Fernandez, bank some more money and then upgrade across the pitch. But that's what I would do then for this week. So let's have a look at my team for this game week three. Off in goal, we do have Pickford. And yes, I know he had a howler last week, but I didn't have him in uh, goal. I had Turner. I do think against Wolves, he more than likely will get some save points. Um, they've just refused a £40 million bid for one of the players. I think it was Nunes. Um, with a back line of Chilwell, Saliba and Estepunyan. I've chatted about them all earlier on, but I do think that's a great uh, defensive lineup I've got so far with Kaburi. And I'm keeping Baldock there for now because he's realistically just a bench warmer. He's not going to be doing anything. I am keeping my transfer this week because I am going to be, as I've said, looking at Bruno Fernandes and Rashford after their Nottingham Forest fixture. Um, I'm not getting too worried about them right now. There's a lot of people panicking and using wild cards to get them out. 
don't be worrying let's see how they do against Nottingham Forest at home and then reassess after that game still got a long way to go yet keeping Saka and Martinelli on I actually really regret the fact I'd never brought in uh, Odegaard at the very start now but I do have faith that these two will get points at least somewhat over the next couple of weeks maybe keeping transfers down the line whenever European football starts and see who we go from there I am going to go back to a staple captaincy of Haaland against Sheffield United because realistically only getting one was it, what did he get last week of a very low goal expectancy he got expected uh yeah expected goal of 0 0.29 um which isn't that great for him but you would expect him then to actually get up use expected way too many times there in the same sentence i am keeping a one you on there and um, if that is even how you pronounce his name i kind of slaughter all the time i do have full confidence in him and this is an off point here a lot of people are sleeping on this fact a one you has scored eight times in his last six fixtures in the Premier League. He scored against Sheffield United last week and Arsenal the week before. Before that, he got ones against Arsenal at the very end of the season. He got one against Spurs and I think Chelsea, Palace and Southampton, if I'm just trying to remember that. He's on goal-scoring form right now in the Premier League. He didn't do much in pre-season, but who cares right who actually cares about pre-season it's good enough to maybe see some fixtures but whenever the first game of the week comes around you think everything you've learned is just out the water so i am going to be sticking with him because if there is anyone that's going to score for forest i do back him and the fact that yao pedro started on the bench uh last week i'm just sort of putting my cover on him i know yao pedro would maybe take the set pieces in terms of penalties but i just have faith in a one you know you know when you just have that fantasy football crush, he's my boy for that. But that's all we've got time for today. And if you do want to submit your team for next week, please make sure to check it out on my Instagram down below. Drop a like on the video and subscribe for more FPL content. My name is Brian and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.